Hey guys, what's up? It's Ben with the Honda Rescue Garage YouTube channel. Wanted to make the announcement of our lift kit giveaway winner from the last video. So congratulations to Gary Harp. He was the closest guest. Uh, the guess was how many steps we took while we were at SEMA, which is a four day event. And the total was 55,712 steps that I took while we were there walking around. Uh, and he guessed 58,000 and some change. So he is the closest guest. And he will be getting a 2006 to 2014 Honda Ridgeline 2-inch lift kit. So congratulations to him. On to our video. This Today, we are working on a 2013 Ridgeline. And this truck is getting the full treatment. Installation of the 3-inch lift kit and the subframe kit. Now, as you see it right now, it's already on. It's already been installed. So what I'm going to do is take everything back off. Because believe it or not, I already did this and I lost the little chip with the footage on it. Very frustrating, but I've got to redo this video because I know people need to have the um, the video guide to installing this. Basically, I'm going to install the HRG 3-inch lift kit on this, which consists of spacers in the front, spacers in the back, and a full set of subframe spacers that make the 3-inch kit work. To be clear, this is not a body lift. A body lift is something that you would use on a truck with a solid frame, and that's not what these vehicles are. This is a unibody vehicle, and there are subframes that attach the suspension components and axles to the body. So it's it's not the same thing as a body lift. So that's one thing I always have to, to stress is that don't look at it as a body lift because if you do the subframe kit, it doesn't actually lift the vehicle. The lift comes from the struts because the struts are actually connected to the body, unlike on a frame type vehicle where the struts are actually connected to the frame itself and not to the body. So that's why the body lift is different. So in this case, what we want to do is the body lift or the... So in this case, what we want to do, the subframe kit actually drops the subframes and allows the axles to be in a straighter line and allows all the suspension components to be more in its factory geometry. So that's the whole purpose of the uh, subframe kit. But we're going to go ahead and get started. It's actually a really easy install on these. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this. All right, first thing you want to do is snap these little doodads off right Whoa, And don't do that. But yeah, take these little things out right here. Let's pop them out gently like that. And then just set them there. And that gives you access to the bolts that hold the strut to the body. So we're going to get in there and take them loose on both sides. All right, now underneath the wheel well here, the first thing we got to do is get everything off of this strut so we can take it out. And that means disconnecting this brake line here, which is just a 12 millimeter bolt. Just take that off and get that out of the way there. And then there's a little clip. You just squeeze it with your fingers or with a pair of pliers. This is your ABS line. You want to make sure and be really careful not to break these plastic clips because you will be needing that to be reinstalled later. And actually, I'm sorry, there's one more little clip right there. Let's take that off first. And then this here is your sway bar end link. Now, the factory end link is longer than the one that comes with the kit because when you lift, this thing is actually down lower. And if you leave the factory link in there, it can actually hit this, the lower control arm here. So that's why we use a shorter sway bar end link for these so that that doesn't become a problem. Now, next thing you wanna do is take off these two big bolts right here. And if you haven't already got one, I highly recommend getting one of these Milwaukee guns. This thing is so powerful. All right, so we're at the top now, and we're going to take the three nuts that hold the strut to the body out. And there's actually no room for an impact to go between here and the hood. So I utilized one of these little uh, universal joint type of deals. And that gives me access without having to use a ratchet to uh, get that bolt out. And on the same thing with this one here, um, the toughest part here is just getting the, the thing to be on the bolt. You kind of have to aim it in there, and that's kind of a, a pain, but... Once you get it on the nut, you can just uh, pop those babies right out, no problem. And then once you do that, the strut will come out the bottom. All right, so on this one, we're doing actually a three inch kit and it comes with a two and three quarter inch front spacer. And the two inch kits will actually come with a two inch spacer in the front. And then the one and a half are a one and a half spacer in the front. That's basically just a leveling kit, the one and a half. It's just a front spacer only kit that just brings the level up of the front so that it matches the back. These things set, tend to sit a little high in the back. Anyway, so this is the two and a half spacer and you can just see you use the factory nuts to retain it to the strut and tighten those down. And then the mounting bolts actually come in from the top and go through into the spacer like so. Those are a grade 10.9 bolt, very, very strong. 
just as strong, if not stronger than any of the factory hardware. That's what holds the strut in place when you mount it into the car. So that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and throw this thing together. All right, the easiest way to remount this strut is to mount it all back on the bottom part. We're gonna mount the bottom back onto the hub and then reconnect everything down here and it'll be sitting in position up there. Once we get it in position where we need it, we'll just drop the bolts in from the top. No problem. All right, so this next step is actually made a lot easier by having a magnetic pickup tool. And what I use this for is to drop the bolt down into the hole where it goes. And you can actually thread it a little bit from this and then it'll just pop it right back out. But once you do one bolt, if you can get the one bolt lined up, the other two, you just have to shift it around till these other holes will become open. And then you can just drop the other two bolts in. It is challenging, uh, I'm not gonna lie, but it is uh, easily possible. And just using this tool, or if you don't have one of these, you can actually take a piece of electrical tape over the top of the head of the bolt right here. And then it will stick into your socket and not fall out. Like you could put a piece of tape right on that, like electrical tape, and hold it in there until you drop it down into the hole. So that's the way to get through that. That is the next step. So wrapping up this side, we're actually gonna install these brake line bracket extensions. This bracket here is actually for the two inch kit and the three inch kit will actually be a little bit longer. And I just put this in here for the video just so you can see how it installs. Um, the ones that come with the 3-inch kit are going to be about an inch longer right here, so this will bring the brake line up even more. It's still got plenty of slack on there. It looks tight, but it's not pinched or anything. So these do help on this kit, but obviously, you know, you're going to want the longer ones. But that's a, the solution for the brake line. As far as the ABS lines, just leave them in the factory location. There's plenty of slack uh, built into the factory design, so you don't have to worry about those getting pinched off or anything either. I would just leave them plugged in. If you're really concerned, you can actually get a little bit of slack by disconnecting this little clip here, and then you can bring this wire up and then just zip tie it to this tab just to get you a little bit more as shown like this. You would want to zip tie it right there. I don't think it's necessary, but if you wanted to get an extra inch on that, you could do it that way and it give you a little bit more slack. That's pretty much it for this side. Now, obviously the other side we haven't done yet. So you can see the uh, sway bar end link doesn't line up. We're a little bit higher on this side than the other side. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna do the other side right now. And then this will all line up. We can put that bolt back in. So we're gonna do the other side and then we'll come back around and finish this off. All right, I wanna quickly demonstrate what this offset camber bolt does. This basically replaces the upper bolt, and if you have a real extreme case, you can replace upper and lower to give you even more adjustment. But basically, as you can see, this has an oblong shape inside the bolt where it goes in. And what that does is it pushes this in and out as you turn the bolt. So let's do that, and I'll show you exactly what happens. Pulling it inward and outward to get the alignment just so is a matter of just turning this cam bolt. And obviously, like I said, if you have a really extreme case, you can do upper and lower, and then it will have twice as much adjustment. These are the 17 millimeter cam bolts, which is the size that the original bolt, the outer diameter of this bolt is. And then there's obviously an offset difference. And then what you're gonna do when you put these in is there's a backing plate that holds it in place once you get it set. And then you can just tighten up the nut. But that's it for the camber bolt. That way you can get your alignment done. So you can get your uh, your camber adjusted if you have your ridge line lifted more than two and a half inches. This one here came in with a two inch lift kit on it and it didn't have the camber bolts. So now we're doing three inches, we're adding these. So it will need that camber adjustment when it gets aligned. So that's pretty much it for the front. We're gonna move on to the back. All right, so onto the back of the ridge line. Now what we're gonna do first is of course put a jack stand under it because you don't want it to fall and crush you. Uh, there's only three bolts holding this rear lower control arm up and that's all we have to do to get this off other than the uh, the sway bar end link has to come off. That's a 14 millimeter. I actually already took it off because I did the other side first. So this side basically all you have to do is you've got a 24 millimeter socket, a 22 millimeter socket, and a 19. The 24 is for that one. 22 goes to that bolt there and the 19 is for that one so that's all we have to do to get this off i'm going to use my trusty milwaukee to bust these loose and then the socket goes cruising across the floor of course all right and then we're going to take this lower shock bolt out pretty easy just pull that out if it gets stuck show you something you can do real quick basically you just put a wrench like that 
and then you can just take it out. The last bolt we've got to do is the inner, and the reason you have to do that is because that bushing will actually hold this whole arm up and won't allow it to drop enough to get the strut out. All right, we're gonna loosen this last bolt right here. Oh, you see it drop, the whole thing just dropped because this bushing actually holds this whole thing. Even after you take these other two bolts out, it'll hold that whole thing up. Now, to get this to come down, you do a couple of different things. You can use either a sledgehammer or, you know, I'm just using a, a pry bar, basically just a pry. It's not that hard to pop that down. Now, that allows you to get the strut out much more easily. The strut is basically three 14 millimeter bolts that, that go into the body. So you're basically going to use the same 14 millimeter socket. There's one, then there's one over here, and then there's one on the back, which I've already taken the back one out, and that's it. Now your strut is out, and what you're going to do is lift it up like this, and then pull it out from the bottom like that. Got the strut out. Basically, all you have to do is we're going to bolt the spacer onto the strut and then put the whole thing back together. All right, so when you're mounting the spacers onto the struts, basically all you have to do is uh, throw them on there. It's really easy. Uh, the spacers come with bolts. It's an M12 by 25 millimeter, same thread pattern that Honda uses. It's a fine thread pitch. You're going to bolt them on through here. Just run the bolts up through like so and crank them down. Now, when you install these, obviously what you're going to have to do is just flip it around 180 degrees so that the bolts line up in the body. One feature that I made sure of on mine is that the factory bolts can go through uninhibited. There are some other companies that make these spacers and the metal actually bows out right here. And I've seen people have to cut in to the metal just to get these bolts in because these are actually pretty long and you know they want to go in straight. If you use a shorter bolt, maybe it would, it would still catch threads, but you wouldn't have to do that. Just a little thing about mine that makes them a little different. So that's all you have to do is your three bolts there. Then you throw them in, throw the bolts back in and bolt that in to the top. And then you can bolt it all back together at the bottom. We're going to do a little bit taller spacer next. All right, so now I'm going to show you the installation on the two inch spacer. This is what this truck's getting, so we're gonna go ahead and finish out with this one. It's the same as the other one, just this one, you don't have to flip the strut around 180 degrees. Still comes with bolts, so you're gonna put those in like so, in through the strut. There's one key difference with the two inch spacer, and I'll show you that now. The two inch spacer, you're gonna have to go ahead and throw these bolts in first before you tighten up these bolts, and I'll show you why. See now, the bolt actually stays in like that. Now you do have to tighten these with a wrench, so we will do that next. Now one thing I also recommend doing is leaving everything loose a little bit till you get all the bolts in. Once they're all in and started, you know, like you get the thread started, then you can tighten it because if you go ahead and tighten these bolts up, that if they're tightened and it's off a little, then you won't be able to get any of the other bolts to line up. So just leave everything a little bit loose until we're totally done with every bolt getting, you know, installed and, um, you know, getting the thread started. And then we'll just tighten everything up all at once. That just makes it a little bit easier to uh, line everything up. Okay, throwing the bolts in like so. We're not going to tighten it. Reinstalling the strut, we're going to basically just do it in the reverse order of the removal. So that means just putting the top in like so first, and then we're going to slide the bottom part of the strut in to the lower control arm like that. And what we want to do is go ahead and get the bolts started up here so that it'll kind of hold it in place and just, uh, you know, get the threads to catch. Go ahead and get the other bolts threaded. We're not going to tighten anything yet. The next thing we're going to do is line up the hub with the lower control arm. And it actually helps if you jack this up just a little to give it a little bit better chance of lining up. So now we can kind of position this in place. There we go. Just tap her into place a little bit there. And then look at that. This bowl here is kind of cool. It has a little tapered end. It makes it easier to line it up. That's all you got to do. And drop this bolt in. It's like that. There you go. All right, for the subframe kit, we're gonna start with 
obviously taking the wheel off and getting access to these clips underneath. We're gonna remove this uh, splash guard or whatever you wanna call this here. Uh, there's a clip right here that we have to remove. Now obviously uh, on this one we've already done that um, and we've already installed the subframe kit, but we're gonna go ahead and take all these bolts off and show you where everything goes so you have an idea when you go to install it. All right, so it's fairly easy. There's just these bolts here to take off this splash shield. That comes right off. And there's one more right here. And you're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side, which we've already done. And then this whole thing will literally just peel right out uh, from underneath the truck. Okay, yeah, there's one more screw right here. And that loosens this whole splash guard off, and then the whole thing will come down. When you install the subframe kit, this whole thing literally drops. So this doesn't quite fit the way it used to fit. Now this one's already been cut a little bit because of the bowl bar. Um, I just cut a little notch right here, and then we cut a little notch over here to allow it to fit over top of the dropped subframe. So you can kind of go by this. You can make it a little cleaner than I did. I just was kind of using my saw and just kind of went at it. But basically you need a notch here and a notch over here so that it fits underneath this after it's dropped. One thing I always recommend doing is putting all your bolts and hardware in a, a little cardboard box. That way, you know, shuffling around on the floor of the garage, you don't kick something and kick it under your toolbox and then lose your hardware. Subframe consists of these two bolts here, those two bolts there, and then you've got a pup here. There's a, a spacer there. And then again, on the other side here, and that's what drops the subframe down. And on the front, there's enough threads on this factory bolt that even after you put the subframe spacers in, there's still over an inch of thread engagement. Now that's important because you don't want to have too short of a thread engagement whenever you take these bolts out. But what happens here is they pass well into the frame and past the captive nut that is that is basically welded inside the frame to hold this all together. So that way we don't need to change these front bolts out. We can just put the spacers in and tighten them back up and it's all good. Same thing on the back. You've got a spacer there and then you've got your other spacer in between the subframe and the body there and that is all there is to the front and basically all you have to do and this is really easier than you would think is you just have to loosen all four of these bolts here took these bolts out of course you won't be able to reuse the factory bolts here the kit comes with these bolts so you just take these bolts out and get rid of them and then these are loosened up on either side. Then you just loosen these bolts to where there's an inch gap between this subframe and the body. And then at one at a time, you're gonna take the one bolt out, slip a spacer in there, and then put the bolt back in. So basically that's it. You've got four bolts that hold this to the body. And then these little bolts here are just, you know, for a little bit more strength to hold this bracket here. All right, moving on to the engine part of it. Now, what's really nice about these and pretty much every other car that this kit works on is that there's plenty enough slack on hoses and wiring and lines and everything else that it doesn't affect that at all. So you don't have to worry about extending the hoses or anything else with this particular kit. Now, the only thing we have to do under the hood is two spacers that go on the passenger side engine bracket and then there's two bolts that come with the kit that extend those down so that it will fit. And now here, it's already been done on this car, but I'll show you. Basically, uh, if you can look really carefully, you can see the two green spacers and the new bolts. That is all there is to that. And incidentally, you can take those bolts out and put the spacers in. And the, the engine doesn't even move. So I don't, <laughs> obviously that engine mount does something. You can take those bolts out, which I did, and this thing doesn't even budge. There's enough mounts everywhere else that it doesn't fall out. The engine's not gonna come out on you. So that's an easy thing to do. You don't have to worry about you know everything falling apart if you take those two out. Now, if you're nervous about it, and some people are, you can take a jack and a little piece of plywood underneath the oil pan just to support it. 
um, and then just lower it down like that. I didn't do that because I did, it didn't need to be done. Okay, so when you drop the subframe, it drops the steering, uh, the steering rack as well, and it opens up a gap right there, which we seal off with this piece of foam, and it slips over top of the steering column, and it goes right in place where that gap is, and that's basically just to keep out dust. Okay, so underneath here, what you're gonna wanna do is first take off this panel here, and there's a couple of clips behind there. You just wanna gently pull, and I mean gently, because you don't wanna break this, but it does just pop out. Let's see if we can get it, there it goes. Just three clips, and that slides out of the way, and that allows you to pull the carpet up. Now this little clip did come out, but we'll just snap that back on when we go to reinstall it, and it'll be fine. Uh, under here, there are these three screws, the little plastic retainer clips that hold on the dust shield for the bottom of the steering column. So now we will take these off. But once this is off, this will slide off over top of the steering shaft. And then you're just gonna pull that up and out of the way. And this will give you access to where the steering column actually passes through the sheet metal. All right, so we're gonna take a closer look at where the steering shaft goes through the firewall right here. And basically you can see where the foam piece seals it off. If you look close there and where we've had to bend the metal a little bit to gain clearance for this to turn. So now when I turn the wheel, you'll see where that thing goes and you can see that there is more than enough clearance. And all I did was take a screwdriver like this and pry against it to push that metal out of the way. Now it, it has free movement all the way around, no problem. And then the foam piece actually will seal off the dust and a little bit of sound that actually passes through there when you're driving along. But that's all that is, is just a tiny little bend. It is not permanent, you can reverse it. Just pry it back whenever you go to take the lift off. If you ever decide you don't wanna have a lifted ridge line anymore, it's not a big deal to do. So that's it as far as the front of the subframe kit. We're gonna move on to the back. All right guys, this is the back and it's actually easier than the front, believe it or not. It is super easy to do the subframe drop on the back of a ridge line. All you have to do is remove these bolts and they are too short to um, install the subframe spacers unlike the front. So the kit will actually come with replacement rear bolts and all you have to do is just the same procedure as the front. Loosen all four of the bolts, not all the way, just so that it has enough room to drop. And then you're gonna take one bolt at a time out, put the subframe spacer here, replace it with the new bolt, and that holds it in while you do the other ones. That's all you have to do. It's very, very simple, easy install, just four bolts in the back. Uh, and then you're done. All right, the last part of the subframe kit installation is gonna be these two spacers here. This is the rear trailing arm, and the kit will come with two extended bolts. I've actually already installed these, obviously, but you'll take the factory bolts out and replace them with longer ones, and then those spacers just go right in between there. That helps with this angle here, and it actually will slightly push the wheel further back in the fender well, just because when it goes down, it also moves forward. So when you bring the front of the trailing arm down, it actually moves it more level so that it's uh, centered in the wheel well. So that's all there is to that, just those two bolts. And that is it for the subframe kit. I'm gonna go wrap up the rest of this lift kit right now. It's actually easier, if you're doing these together, it's easier to do the subframe kit first and then install the lift kit. Uh, just a little tip. So there you go, and that's it. And that is really it. Um, such an easy fix for saving axle problems. I mean, these things are known to have axle problems, you know, the vibration, the shimmy from acceleration. A lot of these Hondas have that from, you know, being a little too high or axles being worn out or whatever. Um, as an alternative to putting brand new axles in or as an alternative to going to a lower lift kit, you can install this subframe kit and it will take care of that. And it actually helps with your suspension geometry as well because in the back, obviously, there's upper and lower arms and all that stuff has to move a certain way. And when you lift, everything is angled downward and you know, when the suspension compresses, it's, it's in a different angle than it would otherwise be. Um, the one compromise with this kit, obviously, is that it does reduce your ground clearance. But to be fair, it's ground clearance you wouldn't have had anyway. Because creating more ground clearance is, is just going to put more and more angle on the axles and lower control arms anyway. So it could be argued that you wouldn't have had that ground clearance anyway 
without having axle problems. So to get the extra lift, obviously, you're going to want to go with a taller suspension spacer. And that is the biggest difference between this type of body lift or subframe kit than a, a traditional body on frame type of body lift. So that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this and hope it uh, helps somebody. All right, guys, that's pretty much it for the three inch lift kit video on the Ridgeline. It came out great. The truck looks great. It drives great. There is literally no downside to this kit. It is all inclusive. It fits great. Um, easy to install too, believe it or not. I mean, after you've watched this video, obviously you know that, but guys comment down below what kind of stuff you would like to see us make for Ridgeline. Obviously, you know, we make skid plates and lift kits for the CRV as well, bull bars and maybe skid plates and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, comment down below what kind of stuff you'd like to see us make and, um, you know, like subscribe, share all that stuff. If you guys know anybody that has a Ridgeline that's thinking about doing a lift kit, Definitely show them this video. I think it'll help them kind of realize what goes into it. But I kind of wanted to expand more to the Ridgeline stuff. And I was thinking about doing like light bar brackets and maybe, you know, bull bars and maybe skid plates and stuff like that. And if you are a member of any like the Ridgeline forums or anything like that, definitely share it to that. That way these guys can see, you know, what we can do and how the three inch lift kit works. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it, guys. I appreciate you watching to the end and I'll see you in the next one. Three inch kit install on this one here. On <laughs> if you have this, uh, you know, if you have your element, not your element. <sighs> oh, God, my fucking legs, my back, my knees, my shoulders, my fucking ankles. God dang, this is hard work. Ah! Ay, ay, ay. Let's do this again. Jesus, oh, man. Take two! All right, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Just check it out. God damn, what am I saying? Fucking dumbass.